The following interviews are with Tibetan refugees who had just recently completed the arduous journey over the Himalayan passes. Their faces are not shown to protect their identity and to safeguard the lives of their family members still in Chinese-occupied Tibet. On the way to exile, we didn't always have food to eat or proper clothes to wear. We were walking for 22 days, sometimes in the rain. Even though we knew that we would have to undergo severe difficulties, we chose to go into exile because a few days of difficulties are better than a lifetime of suffering under the Chinese rule. After coming here, it's much better under the Tibetan government in exile. Under the grace of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, I could never be happier in the future. I first came into exile when I was 15 years old. Because I had stayed in India, when I returned to Tibet, the Chinese treated me badly. They interrogated me a lot. They even told me that I should work for the Chinese government, and if I do so, I'd be endowed with happiness. But I never want to work for them, because being a little educated, I know I should instead work for the Tibetan government and His Holiness the Dalai Lama. On the way to exile, I walked for about 13 days to reach the Drom border. After I leave the Tibetan Refugee Reception Center, my goals are to look after my children and work to contribute to the freedom of Tibet. When people arrive here in the winter time, how many need serious help? In the winter time, it's uh, 20 to 25 percent. The degree of torture for Tibetan political prisoners is unimaginably extreme. The Chinese officers extract blood from their bodies almost every day. I have a cousin who was imprisoned for carrying out political activities in Tibet. He was also given electrical shocks on numerous occasions. A lot of blood was also taken involuntarily from him. When their bodies can't hold up any longer, they're released. They're released to give the perception to the international community that China is not torturing them. Monks, nuns, and other Tibetans have been fleeing into exile mainly to visit His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The torturing also drives them into exile. Even if the minutest of political activities takes place in monasteries, New rules are given to that monastery. These are the rules. It's also very difficult to go into exile. First of all, we're not sure whether we'll be able to make it or not. If we can't make it through successfully, it means a lot of trouble. Not only for us, but for our families living in Tibet. When we were near places where Chinese armies were seen strolling, we found safe places to hide and slept there throughout the day. There were days when we didn't have even a single drop of water to drink. We traveled mostly during the night and hid during the day. China has been asserting that Tibetan people enjoy freedom of religion in Tibet, but that's not at all true. The Chinese declared that if the pictures of the Dalai Lama are found in Tibetan houses, the whole house could be confiscated.
In general, we don't get along. We have to pretend that we get along. Because if not, there will be problems for us. If there's a small conflict between us, the Tibetans and the Chinese, if you do what is in your heart, it's considered a political act. There has been some development under the Chinese. For instance, China has set up a lot of schools in Tibetan villages. But to get admission for a Tibetan is really difficult. You need to have an inside connection with Chinese officers and lots of money to pay for the fees as well. In villages, it's hard enough if they can feed themselves. Forget about sending their kids to schools where they have to pay a lot. Even if they can pay, they need to have an inside connection with the Chinese. If they don't have a Chinese connection, even if they do well in the exams, the papers get switched with those of another student who does have a good inside connection. Uh, from 1949 till around 1984, 1.2 million Tibetans have died under different uh, situations under the Chinese rule in Tibet.